This episode is brought to you by CarterComics.com. It's your one-stop shop for all your comic needs, whether it be graded or raw. Carter Comics has got it all. All you gotta do is go to CarterComics.com, fill your card up with all their amazing comics. Use the discount code FREAKNET, F-R-E-A-K-N-E-T. Save you 10% at checkout. Not only on their website, but also at their eBay account. And the link to eBay can be found on their homepage at CarterComics.com. Again, CarterComics.com is your one-stop shop for all comic needs. What's up, everybody? I am Travis Dick. And I'm Cartoon Joe. And welcome back to another episode of this freaking show. It is the weekly podcast with a little bit of something and a whole lot of nothing. And Joe, uh, if you remember from our last episode, I said something and I decided to do it. So, mm. Nice. Mm. If you're not watching our podcast, I mean Cheerios with bananas cut up in it. Because I'm 35 and I can do that. Hell yeah. It's so good. It is so good. It's one of my all-time favorite meals. Breakfast, anyway. I'm, I'm sure there's some unwritten rule out there about eating while podcasting, but after nearly a decade, you know, it's fine. Yeah. I don't know. You're not making, like, chewing noises and, like, yeah. lip smacking sounds. Yeah, yeah, and it's not like I'm eating with my mouth full. You know, I, yeah. I'm taking my breaks and everything. It's not like, have you ever watched Mythical Josh eat on, a, on a, or listen to him eat on a podcast or a video? No, I haven't. Uh, just a, Mythical Josh, for those of you who don't know, is the Mythical Kitchen cook guy from uh, oh, Mythical Morning. Oh, dude, I thought that was your uh, geek-ass live nickname for Cousin Josh. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, no, Ms. Ms. I, I know who you're talking about, but no, I never heard him actually eat yeah. on that camera. He is a, uh, he likes his food really wet. And uh, the reason he likes it is because he likes to slurp it while he's eating it to like try and get the flavor up into his tasters. <laughs> and it's, it's disgusting. It sounds horrible. So I realized that that makes a really low bar to beat. But <laughs> the um, well, when you go back and listen or watch uh, any of the food videos that we have done over on uh, our Freaknet Studios YouTube channel, uh, I think we do a pretty good job uh, being able to eat and drink without having to have those aggressive food noises while we're you know you know doing. It. I mean, because we we've done them in person, we've done them. Um, uh, over Skype, uh, Portillo's. Ah, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you can eat a, a dipped beef sandwich on Mouse camera, burger. yeah, then you know you're doing <laughs> shit right. Um, God, I miss eating stuff for uh, for content. Yeah. Did you get that text I sent you about Duncan? Yes. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, we might do that. Yeah. Well. Yeah, we might do that. Anyways, speaking of last episode, I want to talk about this homeless person at the gas station. Yeah, guys, it, it's it, it was a it was a weird situation, and um, it's like you can look at it from two different ways, and like really like kind of like you know you just you can side with the homeless woman, or you can side with the gas station attendant, depending on where you feel like the line should have been drawn. So um, I was up, uh, I was up uh, north towards work. Uh, I was at uh, 55 and 30. Now, if the weather's nice, I've actually talked about this area before on the podcast where there would be somebody out there asking for money, but also be somebody who's driving around in a vehicle. Like, it's actually somebody who got out of a car, went into the trunk, pulled some shit out, threw it on, and then went to a corner. I believe that's wrong. I, I, because they didn't appear to be homeless until they got into garb and went to the corner. 
So if they were, then okay, maybe they live out of the vehicle. But it was a yeah. decent looking vehicle too. So, anyways, that's not the point. But I talked about this area before. Now, this is on the other side of the uh, highway. So, uh, this is on the other side of 30. This is me getting on the uh, highway to get home instead of getting off the highway to get to work. Uh, I go into the gas station uh, to buy a drink and to buy a lot of tickets. And when I'm waiting in line behind one guy, uh, fucking this um, uh, cashier runs outside and starts talking to this woman, telling her she needs to get off the property, that she needs to go, blah, blah, blah. And they quit harassing the patrons and everything. So looking at it, it's a little bit aggressive. It's like, dude, obviously she's probably looking for fucking money, stuff like that. You know, obviously she's asking for help, you know. Yeah. Yes, maybe not going up to somebody and, you know, trying to guilt, I don't know if it's guilting, but trying to ask for money while they're pumping gas or whatever. Just don't do it while smoking. So, yeah. um, mm. Oh, so, gotcha. Yeah, so I... My first thought was, dude's being a little bit too aggressive, telling her she needs to leave, she needs to go down, because I could hear him through the door. That's how loud he was, especially being right next to Howie. He was fucking loud. I was like, dude, what yeah, the fuck is he yelling about? I was like, she seems nice. She seems innocent. I don't see what the problem is. But then once he kind of walked back towards and you could see her again, she's standing next to the gas pump smoking, mm. asking people for money. So, uh, it, it's a weird situation, I guess, like, because I, and, uh, I always feel uncomfortable when I'm just sitting at a light and there's somebody outside my door with a sign and I don't carry a lot of cash with me anymore. Everything's either on a card or Google. Yeah, and if I had cash, it'd be different. I also, in the winter time, I'll go and I'll buy like a bunch of hand warmers, like the hot hands things. Mm hmm And I'll hand those out if I, you know, I'll be like, Hey, I don't have any cash, but here's some hand warmers. You look cold. That's sweet. Um, anyways, so God, that's really sweet of you, Joe. Good for you. You get a you get a Star Award. Oh, thanks. We don't hand them out too often, but you get a good Star Award, not the bad one. You get the good one. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but um, I, the whole point of telling the story is um, like I, I understand that he wanted her to get away from the gas pumps with the cigarette and shit. I think he's just a little bit too aggressive about it. Like, um, people smoke by gas pumps all the time. I get that. You know, they can't go up. Shit can happen. He's putting the, the people in danger. I don't know. I don't know if you've ever seen a gas station blow up, but I have. It's, not, it's not pretty. Um, I, have. I also found out recently, like uh, tangentially related, uh, there is a, an alarming number of people who don't know you're supposed to shut your car off before you pump your gas oh yeah that's oh, yeah. uh that's scary <laughs> well it's weird because like you see that you see the shit that they list on the gas pumps is it like, turn the car off don't yeah. smoke don't use your cell phone shit like that yeah the uh the the, the grand theft auto role-playing game that uh that i that i've been playing lately and shit if you don't turn the car off when you start pumping gas it blows up that's wild it's weird. So they 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 try to they they try to put so much realism in there. Now the thing is, like, it's like instantaneously as soon as you put the pump into the car, yeah. it blows up. Wow. Uh, I don't know what happens. If Thankfully, you, you, that doesn't happen in real life very oh often. Oh God, yeah. Thank God, yeah. Um, Although if it, it did, maybe these people would know not right? to do that. It's, it's like sticking a fork in an outlet. Like you do it once, you probably won't do it again. If you do no. it a second time, it goes. Go see a doctor. Find yeah. some shit out. I um, went to, I, in middle school, there was a kid who would put paper clips in the outlets like multiple times. At the school or at home? At the school. I don't think back then they had those, um, what, they, like GFIs or. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. The, the, yeah. yeah. The breakers. Yeah, it'll kill the electricity to the outlet. Yeah. Um, but, uh, that, uh, yeah, he would that, do it. He would do it at school, and I don't know if his purpose was like so that someone might brush against it and get a little shock. But he always he burned his own fingers multiple times, and it's just like, come on, man. Let's get that guy on the show. Find out. I don't even know if he's still alive. <laughs> if you look him up and find out he got electrocuted, 
So I will end the show at 9.35. I'll throw out some just uh, just freaking stopping by or whatever uh, Sarge does over on the gray area. Stopping by to say hi. And they say he got electrocuted for, for holding a golf club outside. I won't finish this bowl of cereal because my life would be complete. <laughs> Shit. Um, so, yeah, it, it's just it's just weird. It's it's In a way, it's kind of uncomfortable because, again, it's like I didn't like the way the guy yelled at her. I thought that was kind of uh, a little too aggressive. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like I probably didn't want the cigarette near the gas pumps, you know? She did yeah. eventually. She she did leave. You know, I, you know. I guess when you get yelled at, it's like the right thing to do and stuff. Um, no idea where she went because I kind of felt bad, and I was also a little bit nervous. I'm like, shit, what if she like pops out of nowhere and I accidentally fucking hit her? Because I, it, it's very offensive driving up there. So it's like I got to get onto the fucking Route 30 right. as quick as possible because that gas station is right there by the exit. So I'm like, God, where the fuck is she? Please don't fucking pull on because my biggest fear in my life is hitting somebody with my fucking car. Yeah. Um, I just don't want it to be her, you know. So, word. I I never seen. I know what you did last summer, but I also don't want to live it either. Right. No kidding. So, um, Joe, you said yeah. something you want to kind of talk about this episode. Uh, you said was it pertaining to the Brad Peck? Oh yeah, I, we don't have to talk about. It. I feel like I got most of it. I, I just I I uh, I was surprised by how much I didn't notice before in watching the. Uh, the breakfast club hmm. um i've def- i've definitely never watched it with any kind of critical thought i've always yeah. just kind of enjoyed it so like i didn't realize you know uh over my life as i've watched the movie i've i've you know felt like i identify with the brain or with the the jock or whatever at different mm-hmm. times in my life uh, the criminal occasionally um but i i never really realized that like part of the charm of the movie is that we're all a little bit of all of them, Mm -hmm. you know, I just, it was something that I never noticed before. And I just, I really enjoyed that. I also, the, um, the way that they did the filming where the kids are talking about how they're afraid that they're going to grow up to be their parents. And then it cuts to, uh, the principal and the janitor chatting and, uh, the janitors trying to explain to the principal, like, like, man, these kids don't respect you and you do care about it because you never thought you'd be this old fart that you are, you know? And it's just like, I never noticed that before. And it was just, a, it makes them way more, like, it's always been an entertaining movie, an enjoyable yeah. movie, but I, I've never really, like, paid attention to the message that might be in it, you know? It, it's happened a few times, and I, I got no examples off the top of my head on movies that, I've experienced with that, but there are movies like like I will pop on like especially like when I just got Netflix. You know, I I finally just subscribed to Netflix so I could have it uh, for when uh, wrestling goes to Netflix in uh, January. I, I started watching movies, but even in TV shows, it's like you watch something again, and you get a different perspective of it, a different side of it, or yeah. or a, a a joke that you didn't realize was actually in. Like I. The one thing I know is more is like how many sexual in- innuendo jokes are in certain movies that you wouldn't think would be in there, but they are. Yeah. Um, oh, like Uncle the Buck Club, for example. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a moment where the 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 brain has a boner, and he like adjusts himself, and it shows him adjust himself, and then he drops his hat. I had no idea what the fuck was going on the first like ten times I watched that movie. Mm-hmm. Anyway, you know, sorry, go yeah. on. So Uncle Buck was one of those movies that like. Oh yeah. Kind of, that was definitely one of them, but My Cousin Vinny, Oh yeah. a, lot, a lot of the older movies, like when you see him like first as a kid, and you don't see him for a very long time and shit, I mean, Breakfast Club, yeah, I'm sure like you, every time you watch it, you fucking kind of like, if you are really now looking for that stuff, like you could definitely probably even find more and shit. Um, mm-hmm. And I think a lot of that has to do now too, like people are finding that shit a lot more now because these how the how the internet promotes like Easter eggs and like movies and shit. So yeah. that like, oh fuck, where were where were other things then? Like what what else was in, you know, sixteen candles, you know, and shit like that. But dude, Breakfast Club's a good fucking movie. And it's like you said, 
uh, you know, you turn out like you sit there and you always associate with one. Then you find so you find out that you can associate with all of them. But yeah. I think you also need to associate with all of them. You need to feel like an outcast. You need to, you know, feel like like a jock. You need to feel better than everyone. Sometimes you have to have that confidence, but you also have that humility. You know, yeah, you have yeah. to be able to stand up for yourself and shit like that. Um, it's also unique when you know. The, the people you don't expect to end up with each other end up with each other. Yeah. And yet the nerd still ends up alone, which sucks. Yep. 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 So and um, Maddie, Maddie was like, they, those came out of nowhere, those pairings. And I was like, ah, I don't know. Popular girl and bad boy is a pretty common movie trope. Yeah. Um, Did you, you, know. do you, do you recall knowing what he meant about bringing a gun to school when you were younger? No, I, I do. I, so yes, Toward like as I got older, I understood that better. Uh, I had forgotten about that part by the time we got back to it. But let me ask you this, because I don't remember now. What was he gonna do with the gun? Kill himself. Okay. When I first watched the movie, I thought he was gonna shoot the school up. Yeah, that's totally fair. That's I was as I was watching again last night. I was like, wait, was he gonna kill himself or was he gonna shoot things up? Which I never right. thought of before. Yeah. So it, I, I mean, obviously he was talking about the pressures and all this other stuff. I thought, holy, you know, nine yeah. or not, not nine eleven, Columbine, Columbine, shit like yeah. that. Um, but when you rewatch it, you find out he's going to use it on himself, and then it's a fucking flare gun. Yeah. But it's also <laughs> cool. Like I don't know if you really realize it or not, but like when they like the the opening, like when they're like the uh, the beginning of the movie when they're going like through the hallways with just the camera, and you see his his locker all burnt up. Oh, like you, you like you realize it's because he talks about you know it's a flare gun. Well, yeah, the flare gun went off in the locker and burnt up and shit. So, um, yeah, dude, it's it's really cool, and it's again it, it's it's a perspective thing based on age. You know, so like I you know like the first time I saw. Um. Uh, God damn, we just said it. What movie are we talking about? Breakfast Club. Breakfast Club. I kept thinking Sixteen Candles. First time I saw Breakfast Club was after Columbine, after Virginia Tech, shit like that. So when you hear about gun coming to school, you don't think about somebody killing themselves. You think about them, you know, seeking revenge against somebody who's hurt them. Right. You know, shit like that. So it's it, it's a, it's a unique thing. Um, good fucking movie though. I yeah, I really enjoyed it, and I'm I'm glad it was on Netflix right when I was looking for something chill to watch. Oh yeah, so it is also like it's a little dated, you know. There's there's you know, I, I I feel like maybe we watched it on TV a lot, on like USA or something, and so I they cut a lot of it out. How many f bombs were in it? I forgot that they use, uh, you know the the f slur for gay people. Um. A lot. Well, not really a lot. It's like twice. Yeah. Yeah. At one point, uh, uh, I can't remember if it's the jock or the, I don't remember if it's Bender or Andrew who, who says it, but, uh, one of them calls the other, uh, the full bundle of woods. Mm. Okay. Yeah. They also, at the beginning of the movie, it's like, uh, on Bender's locker. He's like, don't open unless you want to die. F. Slur. Oh yeah, I remember, okay. I, I remember that part. Yeah. Um, yeah. And now that I'm thinking about it, I remember seeing it blurred out, <laughs> like USA. Yeah, yeah. Uh, except for I think for the first letter, mm -hmm. which I think has made it implied that they just assume it said "fucker" or something like that. Right. Uh, okay. God, yeah. I, I haven't seen no. the movie in a minute, but no. I, I didn't feel like it did. It did take me out of it just because, like. Uh, you'd never hear that in a movie today. No. Um, or very rarely, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it, it also was like, yeah, it makes sense for the time period. It was definitely, I mean, even even when we were in high school, it was not that uncommon to throw those words around. And, no. you know, I, I think maybe we didn't actually know. Uh, we, I'm sure we knew gay people, but didn't know they were gay at the time and so didn't think about hurting anybody else's feelings or anything it was just a funny thing to say yeah well like back then i did find, i do have one 
I have one person who's not really my friend anymore because he has actually turned into a full on like an actual Nazi Nazi. Um, and we used to like when we were kids, we would joke. And then uh, I didn't realize until he was an adult that he wasn't joking. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those uh, yeah, yeah that, that, that yeah, that'll definitely pop up. Yeah, that's not definitely a uh, like, hey, I can't. I wonder what wonder what Brad's doing. You know, yeah. um, uh, he when when growing up, there was always two things that me and my friends have always said to each other. Uh, one is this F word we're talking about, and the other one is that R word that uh, you can't really say anymore either. Um, but Obviously, it doesn't happen anymore. Uh, now, over on JFW, uh, we do make a lot of jokes towards each other. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's always in good fun, and it's never to the extreme and shit. Uh, you know, like, you know, like how we would be in, like, high school. Right. Uh, but even then, like, honestly, I, I don't, I don't think, you know, fuck it. I'm going to say the words because yeah. it's a lot easier. That's um, fine. But just so, so everyone knows, I'm just going to reference I'm just recalling what words were said back then. I'm not calling anything now. So don't cancel right. me. It's just easier for me to emphasize what the F word is and the other words I'm going to say. So um, even back then, I don't really remember calling people like fags and faggots and shit like that. I just never really did. Yeah. My friends would always mock each other, but we'd always use like the word queer. Yeah. Um, now, when we said it, and it was weird because there, there was, there was a couple, there was a few gay people in school with us, and in all honesty, whether you guys believe me or not, we always used the word queer in the actual true definition of the word queer. Weird, like yeah. you, you're fucking weird, bro. Shit like that. Right. No, we would say, great, quit being queer. Okay, shit like that. Mm -hmm. But because over time, because of the way everything is, queer went from being known as weird to being a a uh, a slur against gay people. Yeah. So, growing up in a small town, you always hear words like that: queer, faggot, you know, retard. Yep. You know, yep. Shit like that. It just it just how it was. You know, never went to school up in Chicago. Never went to like you know a very popular school. Don't know how it worked at it, but. I went to a small school. Shit happened. Joe went to a small school. I'm sure it was no different. It's just, yep. it's just how friends communicate with each other. Now, I never went up to a mentally challenged kid and called him retarded because I'm not right. a piece of shit. Right. You know, if my friend was to drop food on the ground and eat it, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, you retard? It's just, it's just how we were when we were kids. It's just yeah. doing stupid shit. Just you were called retarded. Yeah, it's that's just how shit. it was. That's fine. Yeah. I mean, it's not fine, but it's not not fine. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just dumb kid shit. Exactly. It's like, I'm not going up to people I don't know and calling them retarded, calling them queers and shit like that. It's just not. It's internal friends who have an understanding of what we're just messing with each other because that's what it was like then. Yeah. Obviously, it doesn't happen anymore. Now, there are times where I'll be on JFW and I'll be talking with uh, Nubby, I'll be talking with Pax and shit. And there were a glimpse in my moment where I just want to, like, dude, that is the most retarded fucking thing I've ever heard. But I don't say it because I know we're not in that generation anymore. Yep. So go dumb. Yeah, I wish there was a good word that could be used as a substitute, but there just isn't. There's not. There's not because you the know, problem like is sometimes, sometimes you just, it's like that Louis CK joke about uh faggot, I guess. Yeah. It, it's okay. Um, to say. We're, we're, I, no, we're, I know. I just, I, it, it's a I, rough word to say, but it's hard to not talk about it without actually saying it, you know? Exactly. It's, yeah. So yeah. yeah. I forgive so, but you. It, I feel like that joke. You know, it's just like sometimes you just see something and it has nothing to do with them being gay. It's like they're annoying and ridiculous and absurd. But none of those words capture what I'm trying to get at quite as well. Yeah. Yeah. But the, and the thing is, like, it's like it, it, even if you find an alternative word down the line, it becomes inappropriate and it becomes associated with something else. And that's, right, the, thing exactly. that, and that's the thing that sucks about words. You know, it's like, it's like when when faggot became an official thing. I, I'm sure the very first definition wasn't gay person. It was what? A cigarette or a bundle of sticks, whatever the fuck it was. Yeah. Um, 
when uh, when queer came around, again, it was weird. Gay was happy. It was joyful. But people started associating these words. I don't know how fag got associated with gay. I don't understand that. I'm so my suspicion. Yeah. Uh, if, so I don't know what order it went, but if it went from stick to cigarette, then I could see where like, oh, you're just you're sucking on a cigarette. You're okay. sucking on a fag. You gotcha. are a. Gotcha. Yeah. That makes no, sense. I could see that progression. I don't know if that's true, but like that's what I would guess. That would be it. That, but you know what? It, it's a logical, you know, progression. Um, I can understand gay because the flamboyancy, the happiness, whatever, queer, odd, different from other people. I can understand that shit. I don't like the fact that these words are now associated in a negative way when they're not supposed to be or they shouldn't be and right. shit like that. Um, because, you know, I'm sure people, you know, Older, who, I mean, their time is probably long past now, but back, you know, would use words like, it's like, what a gay kind of day, you know, what a joyous kind of day, you know, right. what a queer kind of day, what a weird kind of day. But when yeah, it get, is funny, like when we're doing the, um, uh, the freaky tales, when you come across like, right? queer, for example, that was used a lot in like the 19th century. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like, it's like, be, because it was just a normal used term back then, you know, it's, it's insane. And then. It's like, and I and I get it, like, you know, like, the, the times have changed, the words are what they are, you gotta accept it, you gotta move on and shit. I still find, I still find myself saying queer sometimes, but in the reference of it being weird, but that's just how right. I always grew up, because it's like, I was like, this is fucking, like, that, that's a queer way of fucking putting it, this is a queer kind of thing, but it's never calling somebody gay, it's just weird, because that's the true definition, right? you know? But then yeah. you have to be careful about who's around and who. Because the thing is, like, I, I think I remember, um, I don't remember how I fucking said it. I think I said queer once at work and people got fucking like offended about it. And this is like years, years, years ago. Yeah. But somebody was telling me something and instead of saying weird, I said queer. Like just, mm. just nonchalantly, they were telling me something that happened, you know, about the job. And instead of saying weird, I just said huh, queer. And so we got bothered by it. And I had to go into this whole big fucking conversation. It's like, I didn't say it was, you know, homosexual. I just said it was weird. I just said right. queer, you know? And I sat there and I had to explain to him, like, look up the definition of the word. It's going to say strange, weird. That's what the definition is. He just told me a weird fucking story and just said, huh, queer. Because I'm trying to get through my work while listening to him and just responding. It's just a word. Growing up using it, sometimes shit sits in your head that just comes out is like here yep. this is your norm you know so ever since then it's been more of like okay well i guess the word queer is gone because no matter how you believe you're using it people are never going to believe that's how you're using it right yeah there are some people who are still so hurt by it yes from their um, experience which I, yeah. I understand and i'm i get it to no, be honest I, with you there are enough words for weird that i can use a different one if it's going to hurt yeah. your feelings i yeah. i care about your feelings as my friend enough to not use it yeah, weird, fine. odd, strange. I'm fine with these. Absurd, and all. bizarre. Yeah. Okay, don't don't show off. He's up with the source. <laughs> Jackass guy. Skibbity. I don't know if that <laughs> one is can be used that way or not. I'm not very yeah. hip to the Gen Z slang, but <laughs> but that's another thing too. It's like, it's like so so over time and over evolution from high school up until now, you know, when you have to replace words with wor words and shit. So that's where it becomes like now you're just using dipshit more. You know, now you're just right. using a dumbass. Dipshit, I like a lot. I use I dipshit a lot. Dipshit is a solid fucking response to people. Oh, man. Yeah. I, I, I think if I hit a Mount Rushmore, my fucking insults, fuck boys at the top of the list. Uh, dipshit's right behind it. Uh, probably dumbass. I think dumbass is a solid one. I think it's a good traditional one. Red Foreman, fucking, you know, bless yep. your. Well, he's still alive. I don't know why I'm pointing up. Uh, <laughs> dumbass is a good one. And um, uh, fuck yourself uh, became a, a solid. <laughs> Red country. Foreman, rest in peace. He's not dead, but I yeah. hope he's having a <laughs> nice nap. Yeah, well, I'm sure maybe <laughs> his character is or some shit. I don't know, but uh, but yeah, I think it'll be my top four. Dipshit's a solid fucking you know, um, fucking response and everything. That's another thing too. Like, I, you know, like it's just I don't want to use the swear words, but like I'm right now shit to call my fucking friends. I know people out there like yeah. call your friends anything. Hang out with my fucking friends. Like you yeah. know. I love Count of Death. Dipshit. <laughs> I love Derek. Dipshit. I love, just... I love, uh, there's a, it's a thing I learned from the Tumblr kids. 
mm-hmm. is uh, sometimes it's fun to like pick a random food word to use as an insult. So like uh, if somebody's being dumb, you might be like, you absolute banana. <laughs> like, I don't know. That really cracks me up. Okay. You know, I've, I've also heard of like uh, switching out swear words for like ice cream flavors, which is tough for me. It's that, that's a, that's a, that's a rough one to imagine, but you know, throw, throw one out there. Let's hear it. Yeah. I'm trying to think of how it would work in, in context. Um, so like, say, say you stub your toe and you want to be like, ah, fuck shit. God damn it. Motherfucker. You might be like stubs toe. Ah, Rocky mountain road. Campfire s'mores ice cream. And then I still want to say shit. <laughs> yeah, right like you always gotta add to it with like you know like like ah cookie but you know what but i have <laughs> decreased the amount of actual yeah. swears quite a bit solid well and, you know and I, I i get like sherry when she listens to the show it's like it's like i listen but i can't listen all the time because he swear too much i was like i don't believe i fucking do it a lot like but when you really sit down and listen to it, it's like 100 we do yeah, that's just, a little it, bit much. but the thing is like it's, it's it just becomes our conversation. It's just the norm, you know, it's like, and it's how we've always talked. It's just, yep. let's say, I, I don't know if it's a Midwestern thing, if it's a small town thing, it just happens because when you emphasize your emotions about something, then the improper words come out. It's just how it is. Like, I'm sure, and maybe we'll try one day. I'm sure we can make it through an entire episode without swearing. Yeah. But even if we do it, I'm sure there's going to be a point where we say ass or shit and not even realize it because subconsciously it just becomes the norm. Yep. Um, it, it's it's just it's just how it is, and I get that swearing is inappropriate. It's the wrong thing to do and shit like that. See shit there. Yep. But it's like it's like you, it's like you're you're trying to take away every word that I've ever used to associate myself with my friends. It's like I can't sit down and have normal conversations with my friends because it's just boring. Yeah. It's like we love going out and poking fun at each other and making fun of each other. So that's what makes the show like you're hanging out with us at the bar or whatever. Exactly. That's and that's what it is. It's what 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 JFW has become with this freaking show is it's just guys who would get together, just rant and BS about what life is. And they're using the same language out there. Like, I'm not going to be sitting at a bar with a buddy like, can you believe these gosh darn politicians and their their stupid messed up silly headed you know ideas it's like no somebody's yeah. gonna somebody's gonna look at me and wonder if i'm old enough to be in there granted i look like i'm 50 but you know yeah yeah early 40s but like it's like it's like no i just go like like they're gonna look at me like do i need a coloring book or some shit so yeah. <laughs> shit yeah. so i do think it is fun to ironically uh like deliberately change to be like uh gosh darn oh those gosh darn silly nannies right golly gee wally so that's yeah. what actually one of my one of my favorite shirts over on the gcl.threadless store is the one that says heckin pumped nice i didn't yeah. know that existed yep i used to say that all the time i used to be like i'm heckin pumped for this yeah we'll try next episode swear free the trick is we gotta like we gotta like call in uh, a grandma or something or a teacher from high school. <laughs> I'm really good at code switching. Like if I'm around the right group of people, I can absolutely clean up my language, no problem. See, and I think that was always the worry about if we did the Bible based podcast. Yeah, if, like if there's a one moment of my worries about it. Yeah, we're like I get so excited that we're talking about because I will I, I I'll get excited about the Bible. You know, I'm down with Jesus. Um, yeah, he is up there. I'm okay to point. I'm pointing that time. That's fine. Um, <laughs> yeah, not Red Foreman, though. We're good. Um, it's just, I, I, like, we so get so ingrained into these stories and stuff. And I was like, I fuck Skype. Uh, I don't know what the hell all this stuff is that keeps popping up, but I'm sorry, getting like spam Skypes now. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, anyways, I hate that. Um, yeah, it's, you know, they're getting yeah. smart, though. Those those spam calls, those scammers, they're getting smart now because now they're using automatic English-speaking uh, voices in crowded-sounding rooms now. So it, uh-huh. sounds like, it sounds like you're actually getting through from a, uh, uh, I forgot what it's called, but, you know, like the, the rooms with all the callers and stuff. Like, oh, like a conference call? 
Kind of, yeah. But, like, so, like, I'll pick up the phone, like, hello. And it sounds like people are talking and shit. Oh. And then all of a sudden you get the automation. Hello? Hello? Yeah, hi. This is John from Premier Benefits calling you about a new addition to your health care plan. And I'm like, you're recording, aren't you? And then they just hang up. Yeah. Because either the automatic thing didn't pick up what I said or the person who's listening heard it and was like, crap, we didn't, you know, we didn't trick them. It's yeah. like, oh, Jesus. I, if there like was you already one, have a person listening to, like, check yeah. out. My, 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 problem is, my problem now with them is I've gotten to the point in my life where if it came down to ending spam calls or hunger, I'm leaning more towards spam calls now than hunger. As much as I want people to eat, I'm really sick and tired of the phone ringing and it being a spam call or it's being a yeah. scammer who's trying to take money from like a, an old person. Like, yeah. And what kills me, it's such an, it would be such an easy win for any administration, any, any, uh, any presidential administration, like yeah. just direct your FCC to make this stop happening. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, I, it's nutty that it happened and not that it happens at work too, because our, I don't know how their call systems work, but like it, it stopped for the longest time, but now we're getting like two or three calls a day. From people talking about Medicare or Medicaid, and it's like, it's like, what are you talking about? Or are are uh, telling me that I was recently in an accident? I'm like, cool. When? When was I in an accident? Right. Oh, before. Before what? Now? Maybe. Tell me about the accident. It's, just, it's stupid stuff like that. Where it's like, it's like you're not even trying. But I understand what you're doing because you're trying to get a hold of. Because, I mean, my dad's telling me about these texts. Yeah. And which, bless my dad's heart, I fucking love him. But he sends me texts like, hey, uh, I got a text in that my Amazon account is uh, is going to be locked if I don't pay this bill. What is it? I'm like, like delete it's it. Cam. It's, yeah. He's like, he's like, oh, okay, so I don't got to worry about it. I'm like, well, you don't have an Amazon account, so no. He's like, oh, okay, I thought maybe it was, uh, I thought maybe it was uh, messaging me about your account or something. Like, that's not how it works. No. Yeah. It just... Just Yikes. you know, report it, delete it, ignore it. Just nothing. Don't fucking worry about it. Yeah. The fact that my dad is seventy-two and has never owned a computer. I don't think he's ever been on a computer. Good for never, him. I don't think he's Honestly. ever once ever been on a computer. Maybe, maybe when he was doing like timesheets at work, maybe. But I don't recall him ever being on a computer. But the fact that he knows shorthand and text messages blows my fucking mind. <laughs> That's awesome. When I get a text from my dad saying, hey, Travis, how are you? You know, H-O-W-U. And I'm like, good, you know, just at home watching TV, you know, shit like that. You know, what are you up to? Or I said, no, I'm good. What are you up to? And he's like, oh, just watching TV, HBU. Who the fuck is this? Nice. That's so awesome. I, yeah, so once in a while it's a call share. I'm like, are you with dad? No, I'm like, he's fucking shorthand thing. He's like, oh, okay, H V two G O L U V U. Like, <laughs> like but you don't uh, know what fucking Wi Fi is. But you right. know what shorthand and text message is? like always awesome. fucking amazing. Always fucking amazing. That's awesome. Um yeah. anyways, Rob uh, Bass, uh his grandpa actually got got by one of those scams. Really? Uh, got scammed out of like 10 grand because the, the robocaller told him that uh, actually that Rob was in jail and needed to be bailed out. See, that, it, it scares me how they get information like that. Yeah. Like, how the, do well, they like Rob wasn't in jail, obviously, right? Oh, wait, hold on. So, I, I don't was, think he said Rob. I don't think the, the, I think maybe what they do is they, they, um, <sighs> they slowly figure it out as you go. So, like, they call him, they say, hey, uh, your your grandkid is in jail, and then Grandpa immediately goes, "Rob's in jail," and he'll be like, "Is Rob?" So Rob's in jail, and they're like, "Yes, Rob. It's Rob who's in jail. That's correct, you know." And then it's off to the races. Yeah, I, I, it's it's nutty how the people who have the right frame of mind to sit there and look at something when somebody says, "I need you to go to Target," like when the IRS says you owe money. And they, like, right. you need to go get Target gift cards. Yeah. Like, I, I remember, like, one person said, like, I forgot who it was. 
but I think it's like a YouTube video. Like there's this guy who goes out there and intentionally hunts down scammers. Like he like he gets a scam call and all of a sudden like he keeps him on, pretends to be an elderly person, and while he's doing it, he's tracing the call to like wherever they're at and everything. And then she says, like, he's like, Oh, is this so and so at this address? And it's like across the fucking country. You know, like India, Saudi Arabia, yeah. you know, over that way. And all of a sudden then they hang up and by that time he has their address and shit and it's insane, but guy. he's a cool fucking dude. It's yeah. a it's an interesting uh they're interesting videos to watch. Mm-hmm. And um I can't remember what what was it? Like he uh he was able to dr- like get access to their account and drain it somehow. It, it's interesting, but Dang. like but the fact that like, you know, like these people are like, oh, oh yeah, anyways, I think it was that guy that said like, if the IRS needs something for you, they're going to mail you something. They won't call you. Right. Like, the IRS isn't calling you, asking you for money over the phone. And that's why, like, when it came to, like, a lot of these uh, these calls I got about, uh, like, uh, hospital bills and shit. Like, they would call me and tell me I have a hospital bill. I'm like, cool, what's my balance? How much do I owe you? And right. they're like, you know, this, this, and I'm like, cool, send me the bill in the mail. I'll get it paid. Right. And they say, okay, no problem. And then I never received the mail. But I keep getting the calls. I was like, you guys want me to pay this? Send me the fucking bill. Yep. It's like I told you flat out first on the very first time. I was like, I will not give you my credit card information over the phone. And the woman said, I, I don't want it. So it, it could be real. It's like, it's like, well, I don't want you to give me information over the phone. You know, blah, blah. I'm like, cool. Mail me the bill. And they just don't fucking mail it. Oh, and yep. sign up this whole sleep study thing is my fucking nightmare. I'm keep getting fucking new bills and shit popping up for this. So if CPAP's supposed to save me, it'll be fucking I'll be alive, but I'm gonna be fucking poor. Right. God, I hate life. I don't hate that life. I, I hate I hate bills and insurance. Yeah. Anyways, uh right. to to wrap up the one conversation, um I don't use those harsh terms and words anymore. Right. It, yeah, it, it's just it's just weird how the evolution of it progressed and how like you used to do that stuff, but like even though, like even when I'm just individually with my friends now, I just find myself not using those words anymore. Yep. You no, know? I will I will poke fun at Colin because every because Colin, people always use people always made the joke that like me and Colin were gay and shit. Mm-hmm. Just you know because you know we're two d- single dudes living together and you know we've been friends for so long and all this stuff. So like that that was always a joke. So we still play off that joke from time to time when we're together. Yeah, sure. Like, you know, his girlfriend will poke fun at him or from Michelle will poke fun at him and stuff. And like, yeah, you know, I'll grab his hand and he'll hold it for a second. Or like yeah. when we, like a few years back, uh, when we used to hang out and do stuff, you know, he, uh, we don't, we call it buddy day, you know, yeah. like, hey, buddy day, whatever. And I would go out there and I'd be like, hashtag, uh, you know, hashtag fucking buddy day. And Kyle nice. would go do it once and he said, hashtag buddy fucking day. <laughs> and uh, I was like, you probably should fix that hashtag. He's like, why? I'm like, well, because people think we're out here butt fucking each other, and uh, I don't want them to. He's like, I just put what you put. I'm like, no, I put fucking buddy day. You put buddy fucking day. <laughs> Two different things, bro. So uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So so every once so every once in a while, like if me and Kyle like kind of hang out and everything, uh, like, hey, you want to go to lunch? Cool. I'm like, cool. Hashtag buddy fucking day. <laughs> and so, uh, 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 uh. so that's that's the extent of it but yeah like even like when we're individually with ourselves and now eh, it's probably just a maturity thing too yeah you know when you're a kid and you're learning to say words like that and you know like you just say them because like now it's like oh kind of the cool thing to do yeah that's so edgy uh, yeah but now it's yeah. just like now like yeah, as you get older it's just it's just easier for me to call someone a dipshit or tell them to fuck themselves or call them a fuck yeah. boy and, well i think you realize like being edgy isn't all that cool. No. You know? Especially if you're like, I mean, if you're like me, I I am the most straight edge fucking person. Like, I have no business being edgy at all. You know? I don't know, man. I mean, fucking Pee Wee Herman was kind of edgy and he wore a bow tie. That's true. Yeah. Uh, but I don't have a genie in my house. I wish I did. God, what 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 did, he, what did he used to say? Salabim, Salamim, or something like that. Something like that. Ah, oh, God. Like a high, like a hiney, hiney ho. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, that's true, too. Yeah, word of the day. Um, next season, um, what do you think about the idea for our next season uh, kind of a theme thing? I sent you. When did you send it? I don't fucking remember. Last week or something. The, uh, they're like, uh, like I give you five things, like they're rated like, like by dollar amounts. And I can't remember if it was Instagram or Facebook. It was one of the social medias. Gotcha. Let me check. Yeah. Well, basically, I mean, like, like people are going out there and like they're doing all these cool things and they're making like shows of it. I was like, maybe we can make it like a segment thing where it's like, oh, yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah. 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 It's like, yeah. Yeah, it's like you like, yeah, you build your perfect whatever, you know. For five dollars, you get this. Four, you get this. Three, you get this. Two, you get this. Blah 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 blah. And you start out with like eleven dollars. You start out with like fifteen dollars and stuff. Yeah. And like, so I think I think next season that's going to be our thing outside of uh, freaking drinking. Which I could ask you, but it's going to be the same as last time. You're drinking coffee and I'm drinking that's water. True. So yep. I did drink the milk that was in my cereal. So I mean, I guess that kind of counts. Nice. Um, but no, let me probably. ask you, Joe. What uh, what are you freaking thinking about? What am I freaking thinking about? Yeah. I am freaking thinking about. Um, boy, I hoped something would be there by the time I got to it. There is a new podcast that I've been listening to uh, that came out on. So there's a a great. I think it's a really great podcast called Behind the Bastards. Um, it's by one of my one of my favorite journalists, um, yeah. and he just does like uh, it's like a historical podcast where he does a deep dive. Uh, usually on on the worst people in history. So you know the first first season was all, um, you know Hitler and Stalin and and Lenin and stuff. Um, but uh, he recently did a deep dive on RFK Jr. That was really interesting. Um, I'm not sure you can say worst person in all of history quite yet, but uh, but I thought that was good. It was a good one. Need a four part episode. But anyway, that. The media company that he's formed because of this podcast has just released a show called Weird Little Guys. Yeah. Uh, and it's fun. It's a fun little show. Um, there's a, the person who does it is a, uh, most of what she does is court reporting. Mm -hmm. She started after the, the Charlottesville um, rally back in 2018, just going to the local court system and like whatever was happening, she would live tweet it all day. And people got really interested. And so now she's like doing deep dives on various criminals who uh, are coming before that particular court and um, like looking into their history. If there's any kind of like, uh, um, you know, maybe their their wives have written a memoir or something. So she'll go and read the memoir that the wife wrote. And uh, it's fascinating. It's fascinating stuff. Nice. So the, the first episode is out if you wanted to listen to it, but it's called Weird Little Guys. And it's just fun. It's it's a fun little show. Is that wherever you listen to podcasts, I guess? Oh, yeah, I, yeah. Anywhere pods are casted. Gotcha. And, no. see, that's, I guess that'd be the right way to everywhere pods are casted, yeah. I've been listening to uh, podcasts on Spotify a lot more often ever since Google Play went away, so. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, we, uh, we canceled our Spotify and switched over to Tidal uh, to, like, pay, because it's almost the same uh, amount a month. Um, but the title pays their employees better, pays the musicians better, but they don't have podcasts. What are you yeah. talking about? You switched. So we were subscribed to Spotify. You're, are you talking about your podcast? Or you're just talking about you in general? Oh, just me personally. Me personally. Oh, okay. I can yeah, feel yeah. You. I'm like, I'm like wait, you know, wait, why are you paying to have your podcast on Spotify? No, okay. no, no, no. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah. Me, me as an individual. I don't use yeah. Spotify anymore because I switched to Tidal, and Tidal doesn't have any podcasts, which is a bummer. Mm. I'm sure they will down the line. Yeah, probably. But I'm fine. Why don't, you, not why don't you reach out to them? We'll be the first. I might. Right? I to. Yeah, see, figure go figure it out. out. You'll figure it out. Yeah, but anyway, what are you freaking thinking about? Uh, honestly, because the last, uh, a couple of days ago, uh, when I was at work and I had free time and I started kind of sp uh, planning out Iowa, I'm really excited about getting into the fact that we're three weeks in, uh, we're within three weeks of going on our uh, vlogs. Yeah, uh, we are. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. Like, you know, like, like, like three weeks from Tuesday, we'll be on the road to Michigan. Um, I'm excited. I'm just excited to do it again. This thing, because I'm happy with the success that our previous vlogs are continuously doing. And I'm just really excited for the ones in Michigan and 
just the fact that we're getting comments on people saying how happy they are with them. And it's cool that we're starting to get away from the critiques and more getting into like people sharing. I got like a hair in my throat. I hate when that happens. Yeah. Um, we're getting away from the critiques of the thing and now focusing more on people sharing their stories and liking our stuff and everything. So the subscriber count's going good too. So uh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just really excited to get back out there and get everything going. And like I said, everything's planned out to where we should be able to. Um, got it. <laughs> um, plan everything out to where we're able to. Uh, you know, obviously day one is always the hardest day. You know, it's, it's, it's always the longest day. Um, yeah. And it's going to be no different on Tuesday. Like, we're going to have to leave my house, I think, at, I think it was 3.30 or 4. And we're going to get to the hotel by 4 o'clock. You know, but we're going to get eight of the 12 cemeteries done. Yes. Actually, we might, we might get nine. I can't remember what it is. Either we're going to get eight done or nine done. But regardless, it's like, we're, we're going to get to the hotel by 4 o'clock. And that's still the fact that it's an hour ahead. So we're really gonna get there at three o'clock our time. We should get to some. Uh, we should get to the hotel four o'clock our time. Go out, be able to have dinner, enjoy ourselves, relax, and we're not gonna have to check out till ten, ten thirty the next day, maybe even eleven, and still get the other cemeteries done and still be home by like four, four thirty our time. That's so nice. it, it's awesome. it's, yeah, it's planned out good, and then the hotel we're staying at is really nice and it's affordable. Um, I think the restaurant we might be going to is also really nice. And depending on the time on the way home, there's also another restaurant we would hit on our way home that is uh, really popular. It's a really nice place. Uh, but if there's time, we might be able to even hit that on the way to it. So we might actually be able to enjoy dinner on the way home as well. So nice. um, Michigan is definitely going to be a cool one. Um, we There's about four, I think, cemeteries in Detroit itself. So... Uh, wow. Yeah, and that, that's what's going to make the first day long but easy because four, because there's like one of them that's like 20 minutes away from the other one. The other one's like 15 minutes away from the other one. The other one's like five minutes away from the other one. And then the other one's like, you know, 15 minutes away. So it's there. There's a lot in the area. Um, I I'm excited for it. I'm a little nervous about it. but I'm always nervous going into like new cities and new towns and stuff like that. So. Because the thing yeah. is, like, if I if I if I walk into a cemetery in Illinois, it's like at least I can say like, oh, it's okay, I'm from here, you know, blah blah blah. Right. But like for me to like, and we've never had an issue. Like we've never been asked to leave a cemetery. We never. Uh, every cemetery we go to is public. We always make sure it's public. We have access to it. We're always there during the day, and we're always respectful and stuff like that. Um, so, but it's just always just still that weird nerve wracking, like you know, like yep. it, it doesn't matter if it's like the, the city ones or even like the ones out in the country. Like, my biggest worry, my biggest fear is always, like, vlogging and somebody coming up saying, like, can I help you or what are you doing? Because we are still kind of filming a cemetery, you know, but we're always respectful about it. We're always good about it. And we never spend more than 30 minutes at one unless, you know, we're driving around one of the big-ass ones. Uh, I'm really excited for one in particular because one of the Detroit cemeteries we're going to visit will probably have the most well-known people we've ever uh, vlogged about. Uh, and that's including Rosa Parks. And uh, Aretha Franklin and her family are at one of these cemeteries I'm really excited to uh, to go visit. Um, okay. I think there's four of the 12 that are the big drive-around ones. Uh, I, think the, I think the rest of them are decently walking around. And we're going to, because there's been positive outreach, we're probably going to do the same we did last year in separately filming. So we get nice. it, so we're able to film more within our time frame. And when we're doing the driving to do the picture and picture process too. So, you know, I'll be filming our drive while you're filming from the outside and then we can stop and do all stuff. Uh, people seem to like really enjoy those. Um, nice. okay. right. So I'm really excited about Michigan. I'm, I'm excited that I was able to make Iowa work out to where we only have to stay one night instead of two. Cause I honestly thought Michigan was our last one night uh, vlog, but actually Iowa is doable in one night too. And nice. There's actually, I don't quite know where the cater's at in route to Iowa. It's probably not seeing it at all. But to give kind of a heads up or a foreshadowing for next year, 
in Iowa, there's a cemetery that has something called the devil's chair. Where rumor has it that if you sit on the stone chair in the cemetery, you have bad luck and stuff. Mm-hmm. Think about sitting in that fucking chair. Um, but apparently there's one in Illinois, there's one in Ohio, there's one in like New York and shit like that. Huh. Um, so nice. yeah, so maybe we'll hit the one in Ohio when we do Ohio, but we're definitely gonna go to the cemetery that's in uh uh, Iowa for that and obviously we'll talk more about Iowa when we do Iowa but I'm really excited for Iowa but I'm really excited for Michigan and if time persists we may be able to add a 13th cemetery but it just depends on time and everything and it's actually a Native American cemetery uh, that we are allowed to go on again it's a public cemetery nice. uh, so it'll be unique it just it's a little bit out of the way and it just depends on timing so uh, if we hit it pets to bring along <laughs> I'd rather not yeah. Uh, maybe a goldfish. Maybe a goldfish. Yeah, I could run from a goldfish. Um, the only other. <laughs> the only, uh, I looked up this devil's chair in Decatur and it says Houston on it. There we go. <laughs> makes me laugh. There we go. Go on. Sorry. Um, the one stop we're going to do that's not related to our cemetery vlogs is there is a cemetery that's right down the road from another summer we're going to. And the only reason we're going there is to take a photo of Kevorkian's, uh headstone. That's nice. It. Right. So we're not. There's nothing historic. I mean, I'm sure there is, but there's nothing spooky about the cemetery. It's just Kevorkian and spooky in itself. And I want to stop there. And it's actually on the way to another cemetery. So it'd be a quick pit spot, quick uh, pit stop. We just gotta. We still gotta research. We still got three more weeks and everything. I'll send you all the information I have. And if you just want to add to wherever you can find, and then we just gotta find a way to nail down certain locations of certain stones and stuff. One being obviously Kevorkian's. So. Um, Find a grave has been very helpful in like narrowing down where spots are and shit. So that's probably the one way of doing it. So nice. I'm excited for it. It's coming up. Uh, like I said, I can't believe it's already three weeks away. Um, but yeah, no, I'm excited. Yeah, this summer has gone by fast. Oh yeah, yeah. It's yeah, 2024 is almost over. So uh, and the unfortunate thing is, um, the Olympics is done Tuesday, and we didn't get a chance to talk about it at all. So yeah. Um, um, it happens. It's fine. Oh well. Yeah. They weren't that good. Uh, no. US is winning though. So I mean that's that's yeah. all that matters. We yeah. lost breakdancing though, which kills me. We lost to Lithuania. <laughs> I, don't know, Shame. I didn't know Lithuania was known for their breakdancing. Who knows? Me either. Me either. And now they, they will be now. Jesus. Well, you know what? Four more years. Hopefully we get a new crew in there and uh yep. change the game. So but yeah, I know. Uh, I know. Briefly, uh, China was ahead in gold medals. We were overall ahead, and we were overall we had most medals. I think we finally got ahead in gold. So, uh, nice. um, I think I think we USA. won gold in. Uh, USA. I think we won gold in female wrestling, I believe, and I think. Oh yeah, Sarah Hildebrand. Yeah. Um, yeah. She's. Uh, I think she's from Indiana. Um, yeah. Uncle Kevin might have coached her. That's really awesome. Yeah. That's really awesome. Uh, good for her. No, that's cool. And uh, I think basketball is either today or tomorrow for the gold. I think it's uh, U.S. and France. So um, the Olympics are cool. I, apparently Sherry's watching it with Nixon because she asked me if I'm watching it on Peacock. And I wanted to. I just never found the moment to do so. Yep. But, uh, uh, but, yeah, no, it's it's cool that, you know, they're doing it. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, hey, Joe. Yeah. Every week our listeners catch Cartoon Joe over here on this freaking show. But if an hour of Cartoon Joe just isn't enough, where can our listeners go? Hey, if you need more Cartoon Joe, you can find me over the GeekCast Live podcast at violentpress.com. You can also find us on Facebook, iTunes, Spotify, and Twitter by searching GeekCast Live. Awesome. Make sure you follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and X, just by searching this freaking show. If you like listening to our podcast, go wherever pods are cast. Uh, but if you want to watch it, go over to YouTube to Freaknet Studios and you can watch the video of our podcast that gets released. Uh, make sure you subscribe over there and make sure you get ready because this freaky show is within within 53 or 4 or 2 days, give or take. Wow. Um, I'm just very excited because we're also going to start looking into the um, short stories. So let's go through that too. So. Make sure you follow us on uh, YouTube, Freaknet Studios. Make sure you subscribe over there and everything. Hit the notification bell so when our uh, videos come out, you'll know. So, guys, that's all I got. As always, I'm Travis C. 
And I'm Cartoon Joe. And thank you for listening to another episode of this freaking show. I'm out.